Settling into a place to settle is also much easier once you have a good ship. A port village will not only make predictable attacks even more predictable, vision range in one direction, it also allows you to drop your 20 grand worth of weight uh, loot right onto your village, then leave. Howdy, Abak and Chet. I hope you and yours are doing well. I've not played Thea 2, but very much enjoyed Thea 1. Appears to have significantly different mechanics. Am I correct that people generally think 2 is an improvement? Uh, I couldn't speak for people, but I, d I do. I very much do. Twelve meat, three bone. Not a bad return. Not a bad return. Made some foods. Uh, there's a Lightbringers area down there. I don't really want to go and go and poke the Lightbringers just yet. I want to see if I can find some better resources, honestly. Uh, what are we doing here? Got some meat on the way. Alright, we're done with the fish fish. We're now going to make the meat meat. No, we're not. We're going to make uh, a couple more of these. Three. Uh, sorry, two. Uh, you'll drop down and help with that in a moment. Don't want to use those up. Oh, sorry, that's the one I'm already making. You know what? I'll just allow you to finish those off quickly. Only got 12 turns of wood, though. Some meat, some metal. Not bad. I think we will spend one more turn here just to finish this cooking. Gather what we can. Uh, sadly, there's nothing that we will be able to gather. We'll try and gather a little bit more meat, then. Given that. There's no reason for you to be there. I don't think we're going to settle here and, and gather resources. I think we're going to make a move back north. Either stop by the fishing area. Now, one of the things with with my setup is that my people have a wider gathering area anyway. Combine that with the fact that when you build a town, a town has a better gathering area than just a regular camp. Because normally you can only gather items directly around you. But I can gather items too areas out based on my uh, god abilities a town can do that anyway and based on the uh, totem materials used to make the town it can have an increasingly larger gathering range so it's potential to to have a really wide gather area if we settled here we could easily have a town that could gather everything around here. Now, it's not amazing stuff, but it would basically be able to gather shadow bone, gold, and dark wood, as well as wood, and fish, and meat, and I can turn, oh, and actually leather, and I can turn fish and meat into food. Spanky Monkey. <laughs> love the name, mate. Uh, love to see someone playing Thea. Oh, thank you. I love to play Thea. I think one of the big ways that uh, Thea 2 really stands out from Thea 1 is the multiplayer support. Having been built from the ground up to support multiplayer. Whereas Thea 1 really only had multiplayer... Oh, really? Again? Okay. I'm worried about, about sanity, though. Uh, whereas Thea 1 really only had it kind of bolted on to the the system that existed. By 
the way, I watched you back when you did Factorio with the rumba. So when Twitch showed you, I got to go and watch. Oh, thank you, mate. Right. Um, well, I know that I want to speed up and power up my ability. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that ability now. And then pass the turn. Okay, now I can see where you're going. Let's continue to weaken you. I don't want to see that kind of damage leveraged against me. Okay, I'll take those two out easily enough, but you're actually going to be a bit of a problem. First turn, they both die, but I don't kill you, sadly. So, I need someone who can weather that damage. You're going to still do 17 damage to Dark Havoc, and that does suck. I'll play you there. You'll absorb their attack. And then I'm going to boost. Well, actually. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't have time to, to act. I will boost Dark Havoc a little bit more. Sir Alisol, thank you so much for that gift sub. That's really, really kind of you, mate. Play that down. Now, because they haven't played this character three times, it's going to be a bit of a rougher one for me, but... I brought them so close. I will take uh, two points of health down. Oh, no. You went for the front row again. I wasn't expecting that. Wasn't expecting that. You lost 28.2 health. That's a bit rough. We're not... You're not within death's door kind of territory, so thankfully. And you may well be healing reasonably fast, too. Let's move it up so that we can get some more morale. We've got 21 turns worth of food now. Alright, let's move out. Break camp. We have got an area there, but I really, really want to get rid of this physical curse, because it is making life difficult, basically. In no uncertain terms. If we cross the water and just keep going up, we can probably get there in two turns. Well, we've got a couple of places we can move through before then, but see how it goes. Got a level two boars over there. Wow, the boars, though. So how are you doing? You're not in the best way, so let's avoid poking the bear just yet. Uh... Let's hope the balls leave us alone. We just want to try and get up to here because from there we should be able to gather firewood and still gather some fish for the t for the night. We'll see. Yeah, the the balls moved off. Good. It's night time now, so we really want to be camping at this point. Really, a bee's nest right next to us. A bit of a pain. 
You're ambushed by a band of crazed scavengers, clearly driven to take more risks than usual. I can try to run away or I can fight, drop some of the equipment and run away. I do have a hunter, yeah. Oh, good point. I can use... If I engage the battle with a hunter, I'll be able to use the hunter's abilities, yeah. Uh... Concept. Uh, we're not. We our god is in turmoil, so it doesn't matter if we try to run away. So we'll try. Let's have a look. In terms of physical, you do ten damage. This is concept, so it's fine. Four point five. Yeah, dangerous to fight with a low with our low HP guy. Four point two. Four point five. Let's have a look at auto resolve. As it's a concept, we can just accept the outcome. But again, sometimes it's nice to see what I can do that the auto resolve wouldn't be able to. It's on normal auto resolve rather than good. But uh, I feel that that's pretty fair. Dark Ever can play. Well, that's got a lot of health, to be fair. They're getting into a dangerous place now where Dark Avex is going to be able to start applying a lot of damage. <clears throat> and make Dark Avex move a little bit faster. Or rather, earlier in the turn order. They're already dead. And Dark Avex is going to now move before. Uh, this one. So you'll take one hit of eight damage. That's fine. This is a concept battle, so we don't have to worry too much. Again, play out Dark Havoc first. And at this stage, I'm simply going to buff Dark Havoc's abilities. There's not much reason to do anything else. So the concept battles don't end with physical harm to your characters, right? Same as the other one. Uh, Yes, more or less. The concept battles are simply, did you succeed at what you were trying to do, or did you fail at what you were trying to do? But the consequence of failure may still lead to damage. It's just, it's not like if you've lost 10 health in the concept battle, you end that battle with having lost 10 health. That didn't happen. But it is absolutely possible for you to end up losing health, or, or sanity, or whatever. So whatever the failure condition is of what you were trying to do. I've, I had never heard of this game until the last stream. And for some weird reason, I now own it. Not sure who to blame. <laughs> uh, I mean, when you say blame, what you mean is thank, right? In which case, me. If that, however, is not what you meant, Belial. <laughs> They're already dead. I didn't know Ava knew Hokuto no Ken. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this, this fight is already over. I love this game. Nice to see it getting some exposure. 
I absolutely adore this game as well. You run away without trouble. All right. Got some extra research points. Nice. Now, I could. No, I can't. I could. No. I guess we're just going to be playing with bees all night. Ugh. All right. Let's get some fish and let's also get some wood. Now, I could do research if I really want to do. I, do, I kind of do and kind of don't. What I would love is to settle down somewhere. No. <laughs> this is silly. Uh... If I want to build a... town, I have to build an idol. That consumes my cosmic seed. The better the material I make it out of, the better the town. So, for example, if I use obsidian, which is one of the best materials I currently have available to me, I'd make an idol of stone. A sculpted figure dedicated to a deity. Build your village. I'd have summon guardian demon, but I'd have plus two range on village site. Increase village gathering range by plus two. Increase gathering by 8.8 .8 and increase crafting by nine. Anyone in the village would have these stats improved. If I made it of shadow bone. Increase village site, but I'd only increase the gathering range by one. Uh, it would be a, an idol of bone. If I used gems. Increase gathering range, so on and so forth. Uh, I can make it out of wood. But I haven't got very high tier resources. However, we can look at the design once again. Um, so you could, you could let, let's say, let's find something made of stone and, I don't know, whatever really. Uh, moonstone, since it's the most numerous material. You get three extra gathering range, three extra sight range, plus 16 on gathering and crafting. It's, that's actually kind of bonkers. Um, just idle. Now, if you used uh, pristine, pristine matter instead, no particular difference there. Stone and metal, no particular difference there. Leather and bone, no particular difference there. There doesn't seem to be anything else that it really adds that I, I've. I, that we can see because that that's at this point it's it's like maxed out it doesn't seem that these change based on the essences being used there's no like elemental options or anything like that however buildings that you build in the village absolutely do change in that regard they 100% change but yeah if you can just get the the idle up to 90 you'll have all of the cool things so by using something like this for example almost there for all intents and purposes it's there uh, but you'd want something more than 2.4 so this would probably do oh actually no just a little bit shy Oh, actually, uh, the stone would probably be okay because there's 32 there. No, 89. My lord. But realistically, you're there. If you if you use pure stone, you're you, you've gone there. Basically. Um, but yeah, if you use something like uh, crystal wood, you probably max it out. Doesn't really change anything at this point. But it's still cool. Obsidian would get us a good way there. And you can later on upgrade it. Now, we've got loads of meat, so let's make some meat meat. And let's also make some meat seaweed.
But we may well be uh, experiencing many attacks through the night, but that won't actually be a problem for us. I would like to settle here and get the Shadow Bone if we can. Hey, a wand about how you doing, mate? What were you playing, buddy? Welcome, Raiders. You have found me. Uh, currently camping out the night. Uh, we've had a much better start uh, with with this playthrough than the last. You're playing uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Oh, nice. Phantom Abyss and Baldur's Gate Dark... How are you finding Phantom Abyss, mate? For those of you who may be unfamiliar, uh, the way I've I've described Thea 2 that I think is probably the most accurate so far is if you took Civilization and Disciples and smushed them together at high speeds. Maybe sprinkled a little bit of a Age of Wonders on there as well. It's super good. It's the original Dark Alliance. They just re-released it on modern platform. Oh yes, yeah, so the, the Slavic and kind of Middle European mythology, yeah. What is the percent on the bottom right underneath all the bonuses in village building? It's not next to anything. Oh, that'll be the chance of you making a trash version or a masterwork version. I think of this as uh, someone watched a Civ Let's Play and made an RPG out of what they saw and added the monsters from The Witcher. Well, that's basically what it is, yeah. That's a that's fairly accurate description. It's turn-based strategy at its finest. Right, okay, so we've got plenty of food for now. Uh, we no longer have any meat to make more food, which is fine. Uh, let's go and have a look. We are gathering the fish. Uh, I would like to gather the leather. And we'll get back to gathering the fish. That being said, I could have Dark Avak performing research for a bit. Oh, that's a big part of me that would like that, actually, yeah. Dark Avak, get to research. It'll only take you three turns to generate one research point. Even thank you. Later on, if you build a, a village, you can get some really, really good uh, researches and rituals going on. Your last start didn't end well last time. What did you go with uh, as starters this time? Well, we went with the, uh, with the Tainted Shaman as the Chosen again. However, this time we took children and a warrior. So a human warrior and two human children. Uh, yes, we do have gathering overflow and efficiency turned on. Also, curse you, Avak. I now own Vintage Story and have been playing far too much of it. Guilty as judged, the defied prince. I feel bad and also not. Also, welcome. Have you played much Thea before, Wantabot? I'm not sure if the base game would be as much up your alley because it, it can be brutal sometimes. And the learning curve... The, <sighs> there are ways to work around it, but... The game doesn't do a great job of, of of informing you and kind of teaching you the ways to think about how to ch uh, approach certain challenges. But the modding po uh, potential on the year is actually quite quite high. I could definitely see a modded one for Wonder. 
I know both Thea and Thea too. Any tips? Do not feel bad about losing. Kind of think of this like a roguelike with meta progression. When you die, you just end up with EXP. And that EXP can be used to, in Thea 1, unlock new gods and get higher EXP with those gods so your future runs will be easier. And in Thea 2, you get god points that you can actually use to purchase perks that you can you can start with in a different run. If you keep dying at the beginning really consistently, change the perks you use for your god um, to give you different kind, to, to kind of strengthen your play style. Now we've got 19 days worth of fire, 23 days worth of food. We should be good, I think. Oop, there we go. Research done and level up. Now I'm not in any great rush now to, to get EXP flowing in. Uh, the world's progression is, is slow. So the world will get harder over time, but it's not gonna just race off and leave me behind. I can, I can take my time and expand as I want to. Uh, but if you have children in your party, you kind of want to be hoovering up as much EXP as you possibly can because it gives your children the best potential to get specialist classes when they grow into adults. Marlo's Folly, thank you so much for the gift sub there. Right. Does our medic need strength? No. What our medic wants is to be smarter, though. Yeah, the completely safe pill will improve. Also, well, actually, reliable argument benefits from from wisdom more than intelligence. Still, let's go for that. I mean, having a little bit of extra strength is always actually kind of useful. But for now, this is good. This is good. Uh... Just kind of tracing out where we would have access to gathering from here. I, I don't feel that this is a bad spot for us to set up our camp. Yeah, Spanky Monkey, that's that's what I was just doing. I was just kind of considering what we could do here, and I, and I, I actually feel that this wouldn't be a bad place. That being said, we don't have many people yet. So the, cons, the, the, the bad side about that is that... Uh, Unfortunately, we would be splitting up our party quite quite badly, no matter what we did. But you know, to get Beth said on your coal. Well, we don't have coal on the starter island, so if we wanna if we want to settle first, I I appreciate there's there's always going to be somewhere better, but if you don't if you don't make the game easier for yourself by forcing it to give you coal on the starter island then to settle near coal requires a lot longer playing as a vagabond before you can get anywhere where it's going to be coal. Take care, Hollow Soul. And it's one of those things of, well, there, there's always a better place to settle. Why don't you wait for that? Okay, so you found a pretty good place that's better than the last one, but there's going to be a better place than this to settle. Why don't you wait for that? It's one of these things where, you know, by the time you find the best place, you've played the game. I personally never settle on the Starter Island. I have very little issue with settling on the Starter Island. But it does require that you have a larger um, a larger population to make going out and, and scavenging a more manageable affair. It also depends in a big way on how big your um, your battles can be. Because one of the difficulty settings, and I wonder, can I actually bring those up? No. Close. Uh, 
Is there a way for me to bring up the difficulty settings? So I've got God Traits, Domains, New. Oh, yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> In chat now. Uh, but yeah, uh, depending on the difficulty settings that you've, you've decided on, you can change how many people can be pulled into a fight. And what I mean by that is, is although each card in a battle represents a character in your in your group, you have a limit on the amount of cards you can have in your deck for a battle. So what can happen with that is, let's say, just for argument's sake, that you've got a deck limit of five cards, but you've got five people or less in your group. Well, then, whenever you go into a fight, you know that every person you have and all of their abilities will be present in every fight. Now, that same scenario, but you've got 10 people in your group. Well, now it's potluck. There's a 50-50 chance for any particular person that they're going to be in there. And that means that you can... You, you start to lose your ability to predict and plan around certain abilities being present in the battle for you. And it's not simply a case of doubling up the abilities, like have two hunters, have two pe crafters, have two people who are good at um, magic or, or whatever. Because you may end up with just all of the hunters and the medics in the fight instead of any of the warriors. And it can become increasingly dangerous to have a very large group when you've got a smaller deck size. Let's go ahead and... Uh, are we set to gather? Yes, we are. Uh, we'll bring in some more wood. I'll probably take off from gathering wood in a moment. Another night falls over Thea, and rest the souls of the damned seek out the living in envy and anger. You can almost feel the approaching wave of these infernal wraiths seeking to burden your souls. But this night, a welcomed guest is seen in the shadows. A lapidoc. The Spirit Catcher. This bizarre-looking creature is resembling an overgrown toad with long claws, yellow warts, and a row of razor-sharp teeth. It is actually a humble servant of Velas. In the old days, tasked with hunting of wayward souls and misbehaved wraiths, but now hopelessly overfed and ever busy with his task of devouring evil spirits. Great, leave the creature to its task. Thanks to the Lapidoc, your people sleep well this night, and they feel strengthened the next morning. Hooray. And we got a level up. Uh, Hunter... I'm fairly certain we're just going to go straight for perception. But it's always worth just having a quick look. Uh, yeah, in terms of the factions, uh, let me bring them up. We don't see the Stingers faction, but there are uh, there is a faction that that basically represents intelligent insects. Uh, which god did I have? Maya. Oh, everyone doesn't level up at the same time. Interesting. Uh, people level at different rates because different levels of luck will affect how much EXP each person gets. Uh, Volchog, are you certain about not being able to talk to Stingers without Nature Domain? Because uh, with uh, my previous game with Morena, I was able to ally with the Stingers. I just ended up with enough um, positive Stinger faction 
Uh, you can walk to the patrols and still donate. Uh, yeah, I was interacting with the patrols in a generally a positive way. I can't remember if we, we were talking to them, but um, I just ended up with enough positive stinger faction um, standing from doing quests like um, saving spiders and things like that. So it's definitely possible to be allied with the Stingers without having Nature Domain. Like, 100% possible. Oh, there we go. Uh, right. Um, yeah, nothing really benefiting us here. I guess perception, just because it'll help with luck, health, and gathering. Well, actually, intelligence would help with doing damage to uh, with headbutt. So, hmm. no, I think I'll go with perception here. Yes, the the event with the uh, child playing with with its mother. Right, we've now gained a research point, which we can pop into Shadowbone, and I think I will. Well, let's just double check. Yeah, we would be able to make a Shadowbone bow with this. It would be enough to get us an elemental weapon with life leech. Uh, that being said, would this still have life? No, it would just be a little bit too low. A bit of a shame, that one. Uh, well, actually, no, this is the same tier, so it wouldn't really make much of a difference. Uh, if it were this, would this give me enough? No. But the other way around probably would. Yes, it would. Well, it might be worth us trying to set up. Well, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference, though, looking at it now. Uh, okay. Well... That is what we're going to be grabbing. Grabbing the Shadow Bone, finally. There we go. Unlocking this resource will allow your people to gather it. Your Chosen will also receive 10 units of the resource. Now, is this considered a... Actually, no. I, I would need to take a raft with me. There, rather than being able to just sail into the uh, into the dock, as it were. That being said, you carry a raft, don't you? I can't remember if if the current party has to carry a raft when it makes landfall or not. Yeah, you carry the boats, yep. Gotcha.
now, since they can just make landfall, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for them to just drop a couple of items here. Uh, do I have the building materials to make anything just yet? Not just yet, no. How I would love to. Alas, no. We do have clay not far away. Well, we could go and gather that, I suppose. But for the time being, let's make sure that we're just gathering the shadow bone. It's a rather expensive resource to gather, but well worth it in my opinion. We no longer need to be gathering wood, so we'll stop that altogether. Help up there. Do we have enough to start making some food? Yes, we do. Avak, I noticed you've named a dark Avak. Does that mean this game has cannibalism, or are you just going to be adding flavor text as you go? Well, it has a lot of things. I mean, it has streaker. You can take it like that. Uh, okay, we've got another Lapaduck. I'm surprised I haven't had Baba Yaga drop by to say hello yet. I think if I set up camp here, I would still hit all of the main points. I'd have Shadowbone, Meat, Fish, Leather, Darkwood, Regular Bone, and Gold. I don't see really anywhere else that I particularly want to go for. If I could get a tiny bit more Obsidian, it would be amazing, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Discover the ruins of an ancient human cemetery, one where burial was clearly the custom. There are gravestones with faded markings and even some large stone crypts. Search the place. The cemetery is quiet and empty. You see an unburied body on the ground clutching a stash of goods. Ah, uh, we'll bury the corpse. You tried to bury the corpse, but clearly you have offended its spirit somehow. You feel its anger reaching from beyond and cursing you. Well, Drat. Ha! I've already got loads of physical curse. Joke's on you! But now we've got a dark shield. And topaz. Uh, shields up. It's got a lot of shielding, actually. I could instead give you the spear and the shield. Alternatively, I get, could give you sword and board. You'd only do seven damage, though. Whereas you do exactly the same with this, but you'd also get first strike. I think we'll go with that. I have no idea what will happen if our curse gets high enough. I am really hoping that a witch comes along. An office to cure the curse. I'm getting a little bit concerned. Well, there we go. We can now make, or attempt to make, an elemental bow. I 
There's really nothing else I could add on to it to make it worthwhile, I don't think. Not out of my current uh, materials available. So we'll just go with this. Let's confirm that. And go and shimmy you over. It's going to take us eight turns to finish making it, though. Does anyone else have very high... Wow, okay. Yeah, let's let's get you to help out, shall we? 